Stick around, guys, because we're going from this to this. Welcome everybody back to the channel. I'm Brendan. Thanks for joining me again for another episode down in the lair. We're continuing the build on this EMHW 47% pit special. Again, most likely it looks like I'm going with the Jesse Panzer scheme. But anyway, if you missed first part, the horizontal and vertical, you can click right there. Otherwise, like I said, we're going to cover all the quick time-lapse steps to do this. Um, I guess we're going to have a little bit of tips along the way that particularly pertain to this build, unlike the first video where I had a, just a bunch of overall tips there, especially towards the end. But um, very unique. Let's get to it. This has taken a while to figure out, but it's best to take a while to figure it out so we don't screw it up. So the instructions clearly state at this point, we got to start with the lower wing first, and this is why. So we have these strips. These things come together, wrapped up. These are nice plywood, heavy duty pieces like this. Now what I did before I really separated them, as you could see, I witness marked them, A, A, B, C, so the letters go together. So you really can't screw this up. So until I figured out what everything here was about, um, I want to make sure that nothing got misplaced or um, put in the wrong place. Now, it took forever to figure this out, where this stuff's going to go, obviously, because of the language thing. But you can build both pieces. You can build them like this. The directions say to cut the paper in half, flip it over to the other side. Here is what they already did to mill these pieces, and I made arrows to make it easier for you guys. If you notice that piece of material, and I hope it shows up here in the camera, but that piece of wood, that piece of wood right there is like cut at an angle. So that's flat. The top is flat. The bottom is flat. In between they're at an angle and the reason being is because the way these ribs are rolled at the bottom that creates the angles for your spars to sit exactly like they're supposed to so what you have to do is you take the thicker of these and basically what's going to happen is you're going to tilt them the back one towards the center and the front one towards the center those are going to be the low points so that means the high points will be at the very back and the very front. So take the thick one. I have the high point right there. And we're going to be working on what would be the, um, uh, this is the left side wing. So we're going to place that in its position. The back arrow is right there. Now, this skinny one, the front one goes forward. So it tilts in that one's going to go there, all right? Now, those pieces need to get kind of screwed down to the plans, but we're going to drape over um, wax paper or parchment paper. I like parchment paper better than wax paper. I could see through it a little bit more. But we're going to screw those things down with screws so they don't move. But you have to sink the screws down in. These are actually jigs. And then what I did was I separated the bag of stringers, and you're going to have some that are um, smaller in overall width than others. And we're going to wind up using those over the top. So for now, let's get all the pieces knocked out. You're looking for the unten, which is uh, lower or bottom. We're going to separate all those things. And guys, best thing I found to use it. Here's a trick for you, hacksaw blade. So that'll uh, help you to saw through all those. We have a lot of pieces to start chopping apart so we can go ahead and number them as I did. Here's my ribs. All right, we're going to start to take all those out and then we're going to label the ribs. How do you know which ribs are which? Here you go. So you have to pull out this sheet of the plans. Now, this picture kind of depicts what I was talking about. So you see how it's angled down towards the center and you see there you're going to use that your spar, that your spar. The pieces we're screwing at a table are simply the tapered jigs. The higher ones in the back 
lower ones in the front so we can build the right and the left lower wing at the same time here's my wing ribs notice that um, as you look to this the thin portion there is going to be the top little triangle piece there there top so to the right is up and you're going to notice the difference in the ribs so rib one two has a hole three still has a hole there but that one then we have four five six is different with another piece for a servo tube and then so forth and so on so every one of them looks different we're going to take a pen and we're going to mark them but we're going to take all of the pieces for both lower wings we're going to get them out All we're doing in this step is simply uh, organizing all the pieces after we cut them out. There's a lot of pieces here to each wing, so you just want to go ahead and lay them out over your plans uh, so everything is in the right spot. Now, using the wing layout plans, I'm just going to go ahead and orientate all of the ribs, and I use a marker to mark the top of them so that way I know they are facing the right direction. Stack them all together so I can lay them all out in one big run. All the black marks should go up. Here I'm just using pliers to push in T-pins just to keep all of those wooden spars in place on top of the rails. Make sure that on the inside edges you stay long to allow that first rib to be slanted. Alright guys, time to build the wing. So always starting on the lower half per the directions. These are... Um, the big support jigs, they are cut at a bevel. See the picture? So you want to attach the smaller one. You can see that I've screwed it down to the plans. Plans are covered up so I could still see through there, but all the screws are recessed below the surface. We are going to have the um, leading edge forward. This is the trailing edge. So the trailing edge has the smaller spar and um, the, the leading edge has the bigger spar but those pieces are cut so they're essentially like this almost like a fishbowl so it angles these pieces you want to run them long out past the plans on each end number one rib is actually the first rib um, in order but it's the last one to go in i have all of mine marked right up at the top so i know which um which is top so when i start to lay these in i don't have any issues we're going to leave number one off i have them labeled also on my plans two three four all the way up to ten and i'm just going to set these into place before i pin those in one of the tools that i have that i absolutely love are all these right angle brackets they're going to help me to align all of my wing ribs and keep them in place so all I'm going to do is place these along the plans in the front and the back. And that'll help me just get my spacing right. Everybody asks me about those little 90 degree brackets. I get those from Micromark. Link it down in the description below. All right, so our jigs are in place. We're going to lay our spars up on the top. Like so. We have all of our ribs with the exception of number one. They all are marked across the top so I can identify tops. Number one is not needed right now. And now we can start laying out two all the way over to ten. All right, 
Now, next what we're gonna do, so we're gonna go ahead, now that these are set for spacing, we are going to go ahead and pin um, our spars down so that way they don't move on us all over the place. Now what I did is I pinned the leading edge spar at the beginning and once the ribs are in that helps to set your depth to make sure it's perfect from leading to aft. Now I'm going to pin them in place. Everything should be held and locked in together. All right, so after rib number nine, I've pinned it on both sides and we've used the spacer to give us that five millimeters worth of lift right there. So that ought to be pretty good. Everything is pinned down. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to glue in um, this piece right here. This will go so it is um, flush down towards the bottom of the wing. So there'll be a space up top and the surface of the rib. We're gonna glue in, which I found from doing the other wing, gluing in these blocks right now will be easier. So we'll get those put in and then we're going to, once all those are glued in place, we are gonna put on the backer plate here and we're also going to put in our top spars. So let's go ahead and start gluing. Now I use a lot of different gluing methods on this plane. Again, we are just using uh, just a regular type on two wood glue that's moisture resistant. Um, but anyway, I found the best thing to use is a curved syringe. You can buy them off Amazon. There's a um, hundred of them in a pack for just a couple dollars. So if you can break down the music in the background, put it down in the comments below as to what you think it is. But anyway, um, yeah, that, the glue in the syringe works great just to put the right amount where you need to. Again, I use a silicone brush at times to smear the glue around and make sure everything's good and coated, but the silicone brush is much better than an acid brush. Now we're going to go ahead and put in our shear webs. Uh, those are the blocks, if you will, in between all of the wing ribs. Um, something you want to watch here is just make sure that, that uh, those shear webs are uh, spaced appropriately. If you have your wing ribs off, you're going to find that this is a mess to put those in. Uh, and you're going to wind up with one too short, one too long, and then you're going to sand it, and then the rest are going to be out of sync. It, it's best before the glue dries with all of your main spars. Make sure those fit in there appropriately. If not, make adjustments as needed to whether it's your wing rib that's off or maybe it's the shear web that was cut wrong. But this is a really nice CNC kit. I doubt it. Now we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna trim off uh, the excess here for our wing spars. I found that I like to start with this thing, but using a hacksaw blade keeps it uh, pretty easy to get right up against that wing rib.
All right, now we're going to go ahead and install uh, the outside edge of the wing in this brace. And we're going to have to slide these pieces on here and here, trying to get them as flush as we can with the ends and here. And then uh, we'll just glue that into place. Be careful when you set this thing into place. You're going to need to support that outside edge because this thing does have a lift to it. You will see that the wing is bowed not only from the front edge creating, I guess, maybe that's washout, but um, you don't want the thing to hang down, which will be easy for it to do until the glue dries. All right, guys, the next step before we put on our leading edge is going to be to install the brackets for the flying wire. So these things are going to go right there. This is a three and a half millimeter drill. We're going to drill both of those on both wings. Now that is the hardened block that you just drilled through there. So um, that supports those flying wires. Make sure we scuff up the wing tubes. Those things are ready to go in. All right guys, so it's time to install the wing tubes. And one of the things that you want to be careful of is that you have your wings on the surface nice and flat when you install anything that's going to link parts together. So that way we don't have, um, we don't induce any warp or twist into the wing. So we're going to get the pieces installed for the wing tube here. Get it pretty close. And then we'll twist this into place. Now, I could tell you one of the tricks here is that it would be easier to do the whole tube at once and cut it than to do these small pieces like I did. So, be forewarned, use the, use the big piece and push this in because they are tight. Again, you... Don't cut the wing tube short yet. Just go ahead and use the whole wing tube, place it in there, then cut it off as need be. That'll give you the ability to kind of twist and use that leverage as you go in there. That very first wing rib is canted, so the just the sheer angle of the way that that tube fits in there, that creates a friction point, and it's very hard to put that in short. Uh, definitely would have been better to leave it long. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and glue on our three by 15 strip onto the nose and then make sure that everything is squared up. You will see right here on these outside edges, there's a part that sinks in and then that's where that thing's gonna go up to for a max distance or length and then that'll get sanded down at an angle. So we wanna make sure that these things are kind of at the top and lower edge centered on the forward part of all those wing ribs. So we're gonna go ahead and let's glue all this stuff in. Now it's time to put on the wicker outside edge of the wings. Um, after doing a couple of these, I found the best thing to do is to take your epoxy and dump it in the backside of one of those tapered syringes from Amazon. That will help you to really nicely control how much and where you place that to get it to glue into place. Using clamps like that just to work around the edge, I found out also worked best. But uh, I have a new tip I'll show you guys for uh, forming those when I do the top wing video. I found something that worked a little better. I used a pot to form this one. All right, now we're going to form the outside edge of the wing using the wicker edge. You guys can see that I've had it sitting on here. It's been here for probably about two days. Uh, I want to show you what I did first, which is I wet it and molded it more to a pot to get more of a bend in it than the kit. So we'll cut to that picture. All right, after I got those edges 
here and here really bent in a little bit. That's kind of the key on the, the pot. I came down here, wet it a little bit more, and it was easier to form to here. Um, and I did start to actually crack that one rib by messing around with it. It's so always just try and support that stuff uh, when you're putting tension on balsa, it tends to break. So anyway, we got our epoxy mixed up. We're going to go ahead and take the clamps off. We're going to put this back into place and we're going to glue it. We're going to reclamp it and we're going to let it set for a while. So let's, uh, let's get it done. Now I found out by doing the top set of wings, learning as you go, right here would be the absolute perfect time to drill your hardwood blocks um, for the bolts that are going to hold in your cabane struts that attach your upper and your lower wings together. Um, I made a template of the plans using wax paper and basically just butted it up against those ribs. And now would be the perfect time so you know exactly where center is on those spars to drill through them because you're gonna have to drill that hole. So take the time. Um, out of all the wings now that I've done, I could tell you that right at this stage is the best time to drill those holes. Now it's time to start forming the aileron. Uh, the biggest, fattest piece of wood that you need is going to be uh, the aileron, the backer for it. You only have one piece that has a channel really cut out. Make sure you sand down that guide wire rod that goes in there. I center that tube uh, down the center of that balsa strip. And then just go ahead and um, wick thin CA all the way through there and that's going to hold everything together for you. The ends get epoxied on and uh, make sure you allow enough clearance when you do this aileron. This aileron is, believe it or not, kind of finicky to get everything lined up and make sure that everything's right. But there's a lot of sand in here that's needed on that back strip to make sure that that thing fits right. Um, a long sanding bar here is going to be your friend, not a small one. Now that the epoxy is fully cured and uh, bound your wicker edge to that outside piece of balsa, that rounded part, now you can go ahead and just cut through the framework to allow that tube to come in. And now you're gonna fish your guide wire all the way through everything to hold it all together. This will help you to put on all your trailing edge ribs. Now following the plans, I'm just going to use a marker and I'm going to mark the depth of that trailing edge uh, strip of wood that has to go across there so I know how far that should go up on every one of those ribs. It'll make it easy when you go to place it on there. You are absolutely gonna get waves in that trailing edge if you do not use solid metal bars on the top and the bottom to pinch it together. 
Pinching it together will actually cause the interior areas to crush in a little bit where it doesn't matter, but it leaves the outside edge straight so as you look down it, it doesn't look all wiggly wobbly. All right guys, in the last step here you can see that I used a, um, a level as a straight edge just so I know that that strip is straight all the way across and I don't have any of this on the back side. And with the top one pressed, I just made sure that the bottom edge underneath lined up all the way across, which it does. So we're just gonna let this sit and dry uh, for a few hours. We'll come back to this later and then we're gonna work on this leading edge. So um, this one I believe is a 20 by what I call three or maybe it's even two and a half, those strips in the back. But they're the pack that has the long strips and there's the most of them. So um, no doubt about it that those are the right ones for this application. But we're gonna finish up that trailing edge. We have our leading edge that we're gonna work at getting on there. Um, we're going to fine tune where the wicker comes around to the front leading edge there. We're gonna fine tune that and then we're gonna work on getting our sheeting up over the top before we glue on this final piece because we're gonna have to taper that. So uh, we'll get into that later, but again, let's let it sit and dry. Now one of the things you really don't see here is that leading edge strip that we put on. Make sure you sand that at the same angles as your wing ribs before you put on this sheeting. That'll allow the sheeting to start to roll over when you put that nose cap on. Simple weights hold it on. I put a groove in there to slide over the flying wire bracket. And all you have to do is just be patient. Use uh, shot peens. I use bean bags with some extra weight on there, whatever just to start to roll that thing over the edge. All right guys, and here you can see our other piece of sheeting that'll be inboard on the wing. Um, closest to the fuselage is done. We'll just lift this off the table. And all we did was just kind of set it in a position straight and then glue the seams together, put some weight on it overnight. We'll try and peel it off the <clears throat> off the paper here. So a little bit of sand in there on the bottom, but that's a nice sheet that'll cover up on the um, what'll be the inside of our our wing area right there. So we can set this off to the side. All right, now we're gonna take off, we did the sheeting on both sides. We're gonna take this off nice and flat. We're gonna taper it into our rounded edge and then we're gonna get ready to glue on our leading edge.
Now this is a cool little trick. I just simply use a chalk line center to center and snap it. And as I sand, I sand to the center chalk line. Don't sand off the chalk line. That'll give you a nice straight leading edge. Or a nice straight round leading edge. All right, guys, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start while the sheeting here dries on the inside edge. We are going to put the strip for the air gap by the aileron. Make sure it's the 2.5 by 20, and that is because you're also going to have all your other stringer strips. They're going to be 2.5, so when they intersect, they are the same width. So we're just going to use T-pins to hold these down. Um, we're going to cut this, pay attention to right where this thing starts uh, at the beginning of the aileron here going outward of the wing. So when you put on this strip here, we actually want to cut this edge long so that way they actually form a nice square there. Don't, don't cut this on the rib and stop because then you're going to have the stringer hang out over the edge. So I'll try and zoom in on it as we do it. But uh, let's get through cutting this and time lapsing. If you guys didn't check out the video yet and how I make my own cardboard wing tubes, you need to do that. Link down in the description below. Um, but this thing's about 24 inches long. Um, before we go ahead and finish sheeting the wing over here, we're gonna get this thing installed. I'm gonna do one final seal on the outside edge to keep this thing kind of uh, moisture resistant, if you will. Uh, we're gonna get it put into place and then sheet the wing.
All right, guys. Um, the last step really on this wing is to put in the control horns. We have to epoxy those in um, our, what they call bearing assembly for this. And then we have to put in four of these doodads. So let's talk about all this for just a second. There's a lot of things that had I known how this was gonna fare out, we could have done and it would have been a lot easier on, it'll be a lot easier on the, the second wing, things that we could have done. So number one, before you put the capping strips on the ribs, this is one of the first plates you lay down over the aileron. It's a good idea to mark the center of the rib so that way you know where those are in order to make this mark. So this is the center of the main wing spar here, this line. Those ribs are the center of that one. And I made a template off the plan to basically lay there. And that's going to help me with where the circle is going to get embedded. These are hard points for when you tighten down your, uh, I guess, cabanes, uh, your wing struts there to support the outside shell. So you want those to be right on the, the, the wing spar. And also you're drilling a three millimeter hole. So as it goes down through, you want to make sure you're not off the side and just split the spar. So this is like critical. This is like really, really important stuff. And there's really nothing about it in the directions. And I did the same thing up here. Now, those things also have to drill all the way down through those hardened blocks that we put in there earlier. So it's imperative that it goes straight, not this way, this way, this way, or this way. So this is a big deal. And I've spent a lot of time off camera here trying to figure out the best way to do this. So ultimately, now that I have things marked, I'm going to use a drill. I'm going to keep this on my building board. I'm going to use this square as kind of a reference to try and keep this thing from working either way. I think that'll work about as good as uh, I need it to for this. So that way we go all the way straight down through. And then once the holes are down on the bottom side, it'll be easy to position those. Now, the control horns as you put these in, um, they save this till now. This would have been a lot easier just to do when I did the ribs and everything else. And then you could have sanded and adjusted and placed everything as it needed to be right in line. I don't know why they wait till now and now you got to fight to fit everything in there. So I do have everything marked and laid out on the plans. That'll be a slow cure epoxy. Once that's in, we can cap it just like these do. Now the other thing that we have to get in there is this bearing, which is not drilled. This thing needs a two and a half millimeter hole drilled through there for, if you could see the aileron rod right there that's still sticking out. Um, this thing needs to go, uh, if you can find, I'm trying to figure out how I could show this in the camera. So if you guys look, there's that V opening right there. This thing is going to go through right alongside that rib. So I'm gonna have to cut through there. This thing is going to stick out this way and then you're going to have to find the exact spot where it mates with the aileron and we're going to have to grind a spot for this thing to come through so ultimately it's doing this all right but somewhere here in the middle and then you're going to have to use pieces of hardwood dowel um that is around here somewhere we're gonna have to cut a couple strips of this and then we're gonna have to dig out some of that so that way this thing is still supported there on the inside because you're gonna be grinding a pretty big hole right through the main support of the aileron so there's a lot of reinforcement stuff to do these are little pieces but all very very critical in their own right so anyway um Let's get to uh, time lapsing and drilling some holes and let's pray we don't screw this up. Now again, this step would have been much, much better and you would have been able to see exactly where you were if you would have done this before the sheeting was put on because you want to drill center of those wooden spars but also to hit that hardened block that you glued in between them on both the leading and the aft edges of this wing. Um, once those holes are drilled, you put on one piece of sheeting, drill it right from the bottom, then you know exactly where you're at. Then put on the other piece of sheeting, and then you can drill back from the side that you already had done. So it, there's no way to screw this up once you do it that way.
And to be fully honest, during this build, this is the part that I've absolutely so far hated the most. Um, you have to put in four of those sport bearings, one for every wing, but you basically drill or grind or cut realistically all the way through that aileron strip. And to me, it just makes me panic. So I've probably overbuilt those now with hardened balsa basswood um, in order to support everything, but I feel comfortable with it now. I just, I just don't like the whole concept there, but it does work and it does keep everything um, from sliding left to right. All right, guys, there you have it. We're gonna let those ribs dry. We'll sand those down. Um, I used epoxy on those, so it'll be a slow cure as well. Same thing there on the bottom. And then the very last thing that I'm going to do is where we put that bearing. Once that bearing is in there and dry, I'm gonna reinforce that area with some um, hard balsa. So uh, that'll be the last finishing touch. But for now, we're gonna let it go for overnight. Pretty happy. Looks like wing one is done. Three more to go. All right, as we near completion on the wing, last couple things here to show you guys. All of our hard points are now fully cured. I put a piece of triangle stock right there, so that way uh, that's just sheeting. That way we have something to glue the covering to around that bracket. And um, I pulled the aileron off of there because now that we cut the slit in the back side, you have to reinforce the inside. And I've been kind of at odds struggling with what to do. I thought about putting some pieces in here, things like that. It's hard to tell in the book, 
But what I figured out for me is going to be the best thing. I actually cut that center piece out of that, I'm trying to show you guys here, that lower rib on this one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to take this one right here and I'm going to glue that in because that'll make that super flat. The epoxy will fill back in what was taken apart on that rib. And then I'll put some corner pieces in there to drop this down and attach this here. So I think that's structurally um, what I'll be happy with that. I know that this thing's going to hold up to, you know, a good amount of force. And this is obviously hardened balsa. So let's epoxy that in. Here you go, guys. Bottom set of wings. They're done. The only thing we're going to do yet is make an access hatch at some point, uh, probably when we rough frame it so we can access servos, but that'll be on the bottom side of the wings. Couldn't be happier with the way these things turned out. This is the top side of one of the wings, and I have this one flipped over so you could see the bottom. Super happy with the way these turned out. Uh, tape is on there just to hold the ailerons in place and the clevises so that way they're not banging into the balsa. But anyway, on to the next set of wings. Let's get the uppers done. Well, everybody, that wraps up this portion of the build on the EMHW 47% Pit Special. Thanks for joining me. I hope uh, I hope this helps you if you're building one of these or maybe it entices you guys to dive into a wood kit also. So it is Brendan here at Just Playing Crazy. You're Just Playing Crazy for always hanging out and watching. Do me a favor, smash that like button. It helps us out a lot. Subscribe and ding that bell notification and set it to always so you're always made aware of our cool content. Don't forget to check us out on the official Facebook and Instagram Just Playing Crazy pages. With that being said, um, links down in the description below where I pick this stuff up. But I wish you guys happy flights. Peace out.